The advice and opinions expressed by the hosts of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. And welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod, and it's Monday. It's Monday, and you know, uh, it's going to be interesting. So, uh, man, have we got a big week for you this week. Uh, and, and can I be honest? We've booked out next week, too. So we are finishing April strong, and it's just, uh, you know, it's craziness. It's off the chain. It's off the chain. Uh, is that even a thing anymore? It was that ever a thing off the chain. Uh, I'm Shannon Penrod, and I'm thrilled we're coming to you live from my house. I know you're so used to this by now. It's not even shocking or interesting anymore. But um, we are here, and we are going to keep on keeping on as long as there is internet. Uh, we are going to be coming to you live, and we're coming to you live Monday through Friday now. Uh, you know, previously we were live some of those days and we pre-recorded some of those days because it was what was more convenient for our guests. And now we're just live. Now we're just live and that's how it is. And that's how it's, I, I guess that's how it's going to be. Occasionally, I guess we're running into people who aren't, who are so busy that they're, they're occupado. I mean, look, I'm occupado at this period of time every day. So uh, I, I guess it's possible that we might pre-tape something in the future, but right now we're just live, live, live. And what's wonderful about that is that it's a great way to interact. Some of you are watching us recorded because you are busy during this time and that's okay too, which reminds me that we should probably show you all the myriads of ways that you can connect with us all the different ways that you can be watching us. So Trayvon will get ready to show that to you. And while he does that, let me remind you that our homepage is autism-live.com. And when you go there, lots of things to do and check out. There's a chat at the bottom of the page. There's all kinds of videos and playlists that you can um, access. The I, I'm just listening to the neighbor's dog and the birds have chosen this moment to lose their minds completely. I hope, I hope, I hope you're hearing it because... I hope you're treated to uh, what I'm hearing. Uh, but uh, so if you look on the one column here, it shows you all the ways that you can watch us live, right? Twitter, Facebook, Periscope, YouTube. And at the bottom, you see autism-live.com. We're live on all of those places right now. And we're live there Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific time. But then the show is recorded and it's available still on all of those places recorded, but we podcast it to the other column. Over there you see iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Deezer. And um, wherever you go to find us, you will find us for free. That's a very important thing to us that we want to be a resource for you. That's kind of the mission one. It's not kind of, that is mission one here. We want to provide you with information and inspiration. And by the way, when we say you, we are talking to the larger autism community. I know that sometimes there's like some controversy about that, but because everything about autism, you know, what the phrase is, nothing about us without us, right? And I want you to know that we firmly believe in that here at Autism Live, and we try very hard whenever possible to like, you know, today's show, we have a wonderful self-advocate on the show. Um, but we also are trying to provide information and inspiration to that larger autism community, which at the core are individuals who are on the autism spectrum, of course. Of course, of course, of course, of course, right? But then we also include everyone who loves those individuals. That's where we're coming from. And we want to provide resources to all of those people as well. Um, because nobody, no one gets there by themselves, right? And we know that when we come together as one large autism community, there's going to be lots of disagreement first, right? <laughs> Like, like nobody's going to pretend that we're all going to agree because it's not one size fits all. But 
Uh, there are a couple of things that we all do agree upon, and that's that individuals with autism re re deserve respect and that they have dignity that should be preserved and that they have rights, of course, civil rights, and we should all be fighting for that. And they have the right to work and you know they have the right to support. So I do think that we all agree on that and that we can come together on that. And we wanna provide information and inspiration towards that. So that's what we're doing here at Autism. And why. Um, and we may always always do it perfectly. And I know I get a fair amount of criticism, and please know that I take it all in and that we adjust and try to, you know, but again, it is not a community where it's one size fits all. So if you are seeing something on the show that you're like, well, I would rather see this right in, tell me. Uh, you know, there was a period of time when people were saying to me, you know, you're not. Um, you're featuring too many stories uh, about kids. And so we started doing more about teens and adults and, you know, so on and so forth. I'm going to sneeze. It's terrible. I'm um, falling apart here. Uh, but I'm thrilled to be here with you. And which brings me to my next thing. We have wonderful experts that are here on the show. And ooh, have I got some great guests for you today? Have I got some great guests for you this week? Oh, my goodness. Um, but I want to remind you that while we have experts that are here on the show, I'm not one of them. I'm not an expert in autism. I'm not an expert in very much at all. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm a former teacher and I am a very proud mother of an individual who was diagnosed with autism at the age of two and a half. So, and I've been covering autism for over 10 years in this kind of a format, an interview experts kind of format. So, um, you know, I, I do have an interest, uh, a personal interest in this and I have a personal interest in helping you whoever you are, because you're part of that larger autism community if you're here. And I wanna help you to figure out what it is that you need or what it is that you wanna do or how to access the things that you wanna do. That's why I'm here, but don't confuse me for an expert. I'm just not, you know, uh, I'm very opinionated. Uh, let's, let's be very honest. I'm supposed to, every day that we, every time we do a live show, it's supposed to be my prompt but I'm supposed to put lotion on my hands. Are you guys all washing your hands like crazy people? And then your hands get dried and cracked. And so I'm trying to prompt myself. That was not a commercial for that particular brand, but I'm trying to remind myself to, uh, cause I'm washing my hands all the time, but then you got to put the lotion on or you get 98 year old hands, which I've had. Okay. So having said all of that, uh, it's time, my friends. Uh, for us to do what I fondly refer to as the jargon of the day. This is when we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym. We try to figure out what in the hey, nani nani, are the experts talking about and how can this term help us? Because my whole thing is if it can save you five minutes and five dollars, then it's worthwhile, right? But if not, you know, and sometimes the jargon is just a pain in your rear end. Uh, so we take it on a little bit at a time. We give you the actual definition. We make fun of the actual definition because what else can you do with it? And then we give you a working definition, which the BCBAs sometimes break out into hives when they hear my working definition, but you got to start somewhere, right? Okay. So this is a term that actually got brought up the other day by Dr. Grand Pichet. Um, but it was in the hopper to be discussed today. So let's go for it. Joint attention. No, this is not when your joints get old and creaky, pick me, uh, right? This, that's not what this is about. So Traven, let's take a look at what our actual definition is for joint attention. Um, blah, blah, blah. I think it's stuck, so it's not going to go. There it is. Uh, joint attention, the process by which one alerts another to stimulus via nonverbal means, such as gazing or pointing. Yeah, I think somebody sits up late at night and goes, how many words can I put in there to make it harder for you to understand this? It's, it's like isolating people, right? It's like if you, you know, I'm going to make you have to think this through. Right? I hate that, uh, that method of education. It, it's so exclusionary, right? Let's be inclusive. Let's move on to our working definition of joint attention. Because uh, joint attention is a really important thing. It's the ability to share attention with another person toward an object, person, or event. All right. It still is like very complicated. Like, I don't know what that means, right? But I always do the symbol of a triangle because that's what we're trying to create. And by the way, we're trying to create this with very young babies. 
And this is, as we heard from Dr. Grand Pichet the other day, this is the building block upon which all social skills you know, are, are piled on top. So if we don't have that, that triangle of attention, we will see that some things will happen, but other things will fall apart. And this is what I was talking about the other day is that I call it the Disneyland factor. Because whenever I go to Disneyland and I live in Southern California, so I love to go to Disneyland, um, I tend to people watch because I'm not on the rides with my husband and my son because I get sick on the tram. Uh, yes, I am that level of puppy. But so I will watch and there'll be a mom, for instance, on the tram, She'll be sitting there with her small child who might be two, right? And at a certain point, mom looks over and she sees Goofy, right? And mom points to Goofy or mom looks at Goofy. And then the first thing that mom does, is she checks back in with the two-year-old and, and makes some sort of a face like, oh, you know, it's Goofy, right? And then, the, and so, you know, mom looks at Goofy, that this is the triangle, right? Mom looks at Goofy looks at the child and is, you know, expressing emotion with her face, right? Not even necessarily saying anything. And now the child looks at mom and then decides to go back and look to see what it was that mom was looking at that made her go, oh, right? And, and now the child looks and sees Goofy, but the child who's excited to see Goofy checks in with mom and is like, oh, it's, you know, it's goofy. Nobody's really said anything, but there is this triangle of attention that's going rah, 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 like crazy around that triangle. What we see with kids on the autism spectrum is that sometimes that triangle is not reinforcing to them. That, you know, they might be excited to see goofy, but they may not be excited to check or may not even know that it could be exciting to check in with mom. Because if you are not oriented to faces to begin with, then why would you do that? Why would that be exciting? You wouldn't even show up for the interaction that comes next, which is the, oh, the facial expression, um, which has an implication, right? Now for neurotypical kids, uh, and Trayman, you can go ahead and put it back on me. Um, for neurotypical kids, they, um, they're oriented towards their parents' faces. It's one of the first things that they do. So they're little, 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 and they're in the, the little bouncy seat or whatever. And we're, we're told, you know, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them. And they orient to us and we tell them, you know, or we sing or we do whatever. And that's supposed to be reinforcing to them. But for our kids on the spectrum, when faces aren't really the thing for them, and there's lots of reason to believe why it isn't for them, that visually they're not seeing necessarily the same thing that we see when we see faces, and that eyes aren't necessarily the reinforcing thing to them. And for some people it's that, you know, that it looks different, like Picasso different, but for other kids, we've heard lots of adults on the autism spectrum tell us that it isn't that eye contact isn't reinforcing, it's that it's so overwhelming. And I remember thinking that when my son was a baby, before there was any other sign of autism that, um, you know, he could make eye contact with me, but it was so like intense that he couldn't do anything else while he was doing that. So if he was, you know, bouncing and playing and doing whatever in his little bouncy seat, and then I would make eye contact with him and he would just freeze and he would be total eye contact, but he couldn't do anything else. He would nurse, but if I made eye contact and you're supposed to make eye contact during nursing, he would freeze and he wouldn't feed, right? So for some people, it's that it, it's not that it's reinforcing, it's intense, right? So, um, and I just wanna say hi to Maria and welcome. We, uh, we welcome grandparents. Grandparents are always a great resource here. We're talking about joint attention and how important it is to develop joint attention no matter how old the person is. So that eventually you look at something, you look at them, they look at you, they look at the thing, and they look back at you, and information is exchanged even though we're not saying anything. And it might be like, oh, I don't know what that is, right? Think of all the faces that you make that communicate things. And by the way, for neurotypical kids, this is where some of their love of things comes and some of their fear of things comes. So if if mom looks and sees a dog and goes, oh, 
you know, and then looks at the child and the child looks at mom and they're like, that's not a good face. And they look and they see the dog. Now the child learns to be afraid of dogs, which, you know, may or may not be a good thing, right? So, but it also, uh, when they pick up on these things, they see what mom loves. Oh, mom loves Goofy. Now the child likes Goofy, right? Um, so when that is missing, when that joint attention thing is not happening, um, it means that sometimes our kids don't grow to be afraid of things that they should be afraid of, like the hot stove, right? They're just missing that information because they didn't get it in this little nonverbal triangle of attention. Uh, so there you go. There's joint attention. If you are sitting there and you're like, wait a second, my 14 year old doesn't do this. There are lessons that you can do to build joint attention and to make it reinforcing to the person. And remember, if it's not there, you don't have the, the, the basic structure to build social skills on. So joint attention, really important. If you're looking, um, for lessons for joint attention, go to skillsforautism.com. Uh, and look up joint attention because it's there. Okay. Uh, now we always have a question of the day for you. And I don't want to get behind here because we've got Bonnie Yates coming up. Uh, okay. This is the question that I really wanted to ask you guys on Friday. And I want to spend like a whole show talking about this, but how are you getting your groceries during COVID-19? And I hope that you guys will write in because I'm learning when I, it's one of the first things I'm asking people in life when I'm talking to them on the phone. I go, so what are you doing? How are you getting your groceries during COVID-19? And I'm fascinated by the wide array of choices that people are making. And, you know, there are people who are still going to the store. There are people like us that we're only ordering online and we've tried like five different ways to do it. And I have different feelings about each one of them, uh, which I'll share at some point, but I want to know, what are you guys doing? What has been working for you? What isn't working for you? Excuse me, now I'm, now I'm going to have the burps and the hiccups. Um, so I'd love to know, how are you getting your groceries during COVID-19? Okay, moving on, we always have a topic of the week. And our, our topic for this entire week, which we're very excited about, is making lemonade. Look, we've all gotten some lemons through this thing, right? There's like definitely some stuff that has gone, right? Um that, you know, stuff that you had planned or that you were going to do, like I was supposed to be just getting back from New York City today. And yeah, I'm a little bummed that we didn't get to go to New York City, but there are other things that we've been able to do as a result of being here that we would never have had the opportunity to do. So um, we're all making choices to make lemonade, right? Because when life hands you lemons, that's the thing to do. So I'm wanting to hear from you guys, how are you making lemonade? What are you doing with this time? I'm, I'm trying to get the workout piece together. Some days are better than others, but I'm working out significantly more than I was five weeks ago. So uh, like a thousand percent more because uh, there was zero happening before. Uh, so, I, you know, my doctor, when I see my doctor again, which I hope is never, uh, <laughs> will be so thrilled. What are you doing to make lemonade? How are you making the most of this difficult situation? We really want to hear from you. Okay. So, uh, and then I don't know if you have put it on this, uh, Traven, about the activity of the week. I don't know what's next. I don't know if that's on here or if that's all on me. I'm not sure. But so go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, okay. So here are the people that we have on the show this morning. We are going to have Bonnie Yates with us. She's going to continue to answer questions from you guys about things related to special education in school. Because I know the questions are all of a certain ilk that seems overwhelmingly that nobody is thrilled with what the school is doing during this COVID emergency. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to hear from Bonnie about that. And then a little bit later on the show, we're welcoming for the first time as a guest on the show, although Cassidy has been with us in spirit and in question many times before, but Cassidy Hooper is going to be joining us. She's an amazing young woman. She is an autism self-advocate and she's got a show of her own now. And we're going to talk to her about what that is. And she's tearing it up with her show. I'm telling you, these, these young up and coming people are like, you know, she's amazing. So you're going to be, I'm going to be excited for the first time ever to talk to Cassidy in real life. We've emailed many times, but um, I'm excited that I'll have an opportunity to talk to her. Now we always have an activity for you, but of course I can't remember what I sent you, Traven. It's uh, I'm hopeless, but I, I want you to know this here is, I just keep thinking about 
I have friends that will say to me, you know, I'm just not creative like you are. Or I'm just not, you know, I'm not a former teacher, Shannon, so I don't know what to do. I don't know how to teach these things. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the things that you know. And, and that's always fascinating to me because it never occurs to me because of my background. I guess there's, there's like things that I know how to play with kids that other people just never got a background in. And I don't want you to feel less than, I want you to be keyed into the things and get the stream of, you know, the things that I have learned over the years that are fun to do with kiddos. So what we did is we have a Pinterest page on uh, Pinterest, autism, you go to pinterest.com and you, you know, you are going to have to sign up for a free account. You're going to thank me later (laughs) because because you may have the time to play with it and Pinterest is whoo, fun. Uh, no matter what you're into, you can find something that, to be excited about on Pinterest. But you can look at other people's boards. And um, Autism Live has a board. And you can go and see within the board, we have other um, categories of boards. It's kind of like having a magazine and being able to go to the chapters in the magazine and going, well, I just want to read the article about this, right? And then getting there and there's not just one article, there's 52 articles, right? Or however many articles. So uh, we've always had a Pinterest page on Autism Live and we try to add stuff to it. But um, what I've been doing is making categories that start with at home, colon, and then something else. And I add five a week. So five categories. So there's a bunch of stuff there now. Uh, okay, so uh, one of the categories that I added for you this week is fine motor activities. It's actually called fine motor fun. So if you've got a kiddo and you're and you're having trouble with handwriting or you're getting ready for handwriting, you're not yet at handwriting, or their handwriting is horrible, and you're like, I just can't. I've tried the worksheets. I've done the handwriting without tears program and it's just not working for me. So, you know, uh, so go and play some of these games that don't seem like they're pre handwriting skills, but that's exactly what they are. There's a whole board of them at home, colon, fine motor fun on Pinterest, go find autism live on Pinterest. There you are. And then you can look at all the other stuff we have there for you because we have a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, but it is 10 21 and I told Bonnie Yates, we were going to be to her at 10 20. So I am a whole minute late. Let's bring Bonnie Yates in so that we can talk with her because she is super fantabulous. Awesome. Um, and I'm told that she is there. Uh, she is there. Hey, Bonnie, how are you? Is your camera on? There, there we go. There you are. Well, there you are. Looking good as usual. Sure. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm getting a little, let's see. You, are you like needing to get out and about? No, because I, I do that. I'm just like thinking about like yesterday for the first time, somebody said 2022. Yeah. Yeah. I got to be honest with you that I heard that on Friday and that took the wind right out of my sails. Um, Cause as you know, I have a young uh, son who's going to be a senior in the fall. I do know. And, um, and when somebody said 2022 and I was like, um, no, because he's in college by then. And it just, I don't know. It just, it just took it all out of me for a good day. Yeah. Um, so four hours behind where you are it I, and i gotta say you know it's a slow road back it like really gives you pause well you know uh, the thing that, that i'm kind of um focusing on is like my husband at cal poly is i don't think people realize how much the students have been affected by this yeah. and what it means about their future you know i have i have um a younger child that wants to like have a social life and date. I mean, yes, I can do this. You know, that's my main issue is like, when do I get to see certain family members? But for younger people, yeah, like being, you know, my parents' age and remembering the depression or something. So anyway, um, yeah. I'm glad you're doing the show. We're glad you're here too. And we, I, I sent you some questions, but it was really late. I'm good. We can do it. Oh, you've got them. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and of course I can always, okay. So uh, let's get, let's start with talking about the, the Tolner Law Offices and the disclaimer. All right, well, the disclaimer is uh, you can't use this program as a substitute for real legal advice because it's not specific to your child's issue. So if you have a legal problem and you write to us, we'll try to deal with it on the air in a general way because a lot of times people are going through similar stuff and we take comfort in you know, our strength as, as a body of people that are working with you know, these issues. But I generally refer people to COPA, C-O-P-A-A.net if you need to talk to an attorney in your own state. Obviously, if you have a California problem, we're happy to talk to you about it. And actually in the last couple of weeks, I've had a couple people reach out from the show and it's great to talk to you California people and we've had good discussions. So I can be reached either via the website, Tolner, Tolner Law Offices. Uh, you can just Google up the website. There's an intake form. You can fill it up, fill it out and it'll get you uh, an intake in pretty short order within 48 hours. Or you can just call me and I usually just give you the 310-245-1968 number that's direct to me. So you don't have an excuse for not getting an answer to your specific question if you're in the state <laughs> of California. Um, in, in the larger scheme of things, you have some questions uh, and we're gonna answer them, but there's been all kinds of stuff coming down the pike about how a Senate bill 117 is working and how people's particular IEPs are being implemented, things like that. Um, so just really quickly, I, I'm going to try to read if there's time. Let's see, can I do this? Can you still see me if I pull up a document? I'm, I've got a document up, so uh, let's see. You can share. I, you can actually well, share something. I'm just going to read it is what I want to oh, okay. do. Um, I had talked with Dr. Simon about this question of, well, it would help if I could spell and talk at the same time. Uh, this question of what to do with this time at home, how to use it productively, and how to get some meaningful information out of the process. And she sent me the following little email, which I believe I sent to you, Shannon. If I didn't, you'll let me know. She said, okay. have parents keep track of how long their child can work independently on a task that is assigned, e.g. how much support they really need. That's one. Two. Kids who are performing better in this setting versus class can reflect issues of distractibility and setting, which can argue for a smaller, more organized classroom if needed. Download, download or order leveled books and see what child can read truly independently for leisure. Pick a variety of things of their interest and see what books they will actually read by themselves. This gives you an estimate of actual independent reading level. Four, can the child do any of the quote assigned unquote work on his own? This is the distance learning. How much support is needed by parent? How much is behavior interfering independent work? How many prompts does parent have to sit with child to get child to do any work? So those are some things that are interesting because you're in the unique position now where the tables are turned and you actually have more information about your students' day-to-day -day functioning for the last 40 days or so than they do. So that's one thing that's coming up. Another thing that's coming up um, is people are asking questions about blocking or postponing graduation. So maybe we'll talk about that a little bit at the end when we get through the questions if we have time. Okay, so, we're we're already running low on time, and I just want to quickly say that we've got a couple of questions that came in that aren't necessarily related to special education, but there's one question that I want to make sure that I tell um, this sister who is writing in. Is it a sister? Yes, uh, that she has a 65 year old sister who uh, is on the autism spectrum that moved in a year ago, and she's saying, "Is this show just for younger kids?" It is not. Stick with me. I I'm going to cycle back to your question a little bit later on. Uh, no, okay, so and, and TLO is representing people of all ages in the regional center system. So, I mean, the main problem you have with regional center cases is that there's no attorney fee reimbursement, whereas under the IDEA cases there is. So, if we're running low on time, you can ask me whichever the questions you want. And you know, if people have 
stuck or not getting to it, I can make myself available later in the week. Okay, I'm gonna start hitting the questions. So my son turns 21 in June and we were scheduled to exit his school program, but he is being cheated of his last few months. Will he get an extension? Do you know? Okay, so your son shouldn't be being exited from his school program at 21 unless he's graduating with a regular diploma. If he's graduating with a certificate of completion, he's supposed to be um, able to attend uh, school under the IDEA until his 22nd birthday. So I need a little clarification in terms of what track he's on. What you're asking me, I think, and what people have been asking is what kind of a do-over do we get for this time period? And the answer is nobody knows yet. So yeah. you might as well just err on the side of being a little bit uh, proactive about it. And so, um, you know, you don't have to wait to discuss these issues with the district, it might be a very good idea to request a telephonic or Zoom IEP and discuss what's working well and what's working badly and where the student's goal said he would be by this time this year versus where he is. As far as graduation, I just want to say in case people have that issue coming up, I want to just tell them specifically. Graduation can be um, delayed but what you have to make sure you do is file for due process and trigger stay put uh, long before graduation rolls around. I wouldn't wait till the last week before because they may take the position that you've substantially completed all your classes and we're gonna graduate you. So I'm doing a graduation case, I'm filing, I just got it yesterday, I'm filing it now. The effect of that will be that the stay put will be in effect for many months because we know we're going to be able to continue these hearing cases and that gives us time to work out a deal on graduation. So for your question, it's similar, right? You need, yeah. to, figure out, you need to figure out a way to get some more time. And I would suggest you start with an IEP meeting and if that doesn't resolve the problem promptly, then I think you're going to have to file for due process and you're going to have to address the question of what comp ed you're going to get and there's no commitment, but there never really has been on comp ed. It's gonna be on a case by case basis. And it's gonna depend upon you showing what the missed educational opportunities were during this you know, time from March 11th forward. So that's why the documenting is important. And that's why the process is important. Even if some of the rules are relaxed, it's still very important that people schedule their end of year IEP meetings and not wait until too late. So I think okay. that would generally. Great. I'm going to walk. I'm going to move on to the next question. If I stop doing the distance learning garbage, my son's school is dishing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just love how this mom mm -hmm. words this. And start the K-12 homeschool program, which has a special ed teacher. Can I get the school to reimburse me? And how do I do that? Well, the answer is uh, probably, but I can't guarantee that. But I'm guessing that the homeschool program isn't that expensive. If you're going to do that, treat it like a you private placement and give them 10 business days, not days, 10 calendar, not calendar days, 10 business days, written notice that you're going to place them in this other program because the distance learning doesn't offer FAPE. And you're doing this because you don't want them to lose, uh, you know, academic ground. And you are going to expect the district to reimburse you for this. But it's not that big of an ask. So I would think that that's a viable strategy. You might have to get it, but I think they'd settle with you at either a resolution session after you file the complaint or a mediation. That'd be my best. Okay. I don't think that, ever, are we ending? Because I can stop. No, 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 no. I'm going to hit you with another question. Well, before you do, I want okay. to say to people, this is not a one size fits all situation. The squeaky wheels are still going to get the grease. There's still some grease to be had. So you want to be the, stick, the squeaky wheel. Ask me I, okay, a uh, parent says, wits end here, have an IEP scheduled for Friday. My son is about to be five, ASD, ADHD, has some language, gets a 40-hour program from CARD, which we have continued um, through some in-home and lots of telehealth. I don't know what will happen in the fall with school, but I want uh, uh, to CARD one-to-one -one in TK if we are going back to school. 
what do I need to know to get that? And the IEP is for this Friday, but they don't say which school district. Yeah, I mean, I wish you had a little more time and a little more data because I think that data could be analyzed. And if you've been doing academic work with the child and the child needs a one-to-one -one behavior facilitation in order to attend or to have the work broken down in smaller units and learn, th those would be the arguments you would make for why, I mean, first you have to make the least restrictive environment argument and that your, your child absent any other factors, which I haven't heard, is entitled to go to a general ed TK um, and that in order to be successful in that environment, he's going to need full-time NPA ABA services and you go through your data that you've collected from your home program work with your behaviorist and you uh, articulate the areas of need and why they require that level of support. And then that's the case you make at the IEP meeting. I will tell you guys that I have gotten in many instances settlements, which allowed for NPA behaviorists to come into the classroom. I have al almost never gotten them at an IEP meeting, probably 10 times in the last 25 years, but I have almost always gotten them through the mediation process. Last year, I did have an IEP where I got uh, ABA services for the kindergarten year, but that's because the child had been in a private preschool with full-time ABA and the preschool teacher spent a lot of time talking to the IEP team about how he could do this, but he needed the support and it wasn't right to put him in a special day class. So you got to think about what you're doing immediately. And you also have to think about the fact that in terms of the longer game, you need to make a good showing at the IEP meeting. And then if that isn't successful, you can go to due process and you'll probably be able to settle the thing at a mediation. Okay, I love that answer. Uh, and then one more question. My fifth grader had a one-to-one -one aid. Now with COVID madness, he is expected to learn from a lecture on a computer with no aid and no support. And she wrote WTF. Uh, do I just stop? Do I call an IEP or do I just let him fail with many question marks? I think she calls an IEP and she talks to them about what she needs and she sees how far she can get and then we reevaluate. Okay. I think a lot of people, Bonnie, are, are feeling like, you know, because it's like all the rules got changed. They don't, they don't feel empowered to do some of the things that they knew that they could do before, like saying, I need an IEP meeting because this isn't working. Okay. Well, so what I have to say about that is this is a wild west situation and you need to appeal to your inner artist and creative person. So for example, I had a middle school principal in LAUSD who was jerking my client around and refusing to commit to an IEP date. So we filed a simple due process and lo and behold, the principal surfaced and said, um, okay, we're going to do your IEP meeting. I mean, we could have a, a brief show discussing how people file for due process by themselves in California using prepared forms. Because I think in some cases you may need to sort of get out of the IEP level of action and catapult your case into a status where people that are higher up in the special education division of your school district are gonna be looking at the request. And it is not rocket science uh, and it's it's all doable online. So maybe that's something we should talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we've answered all the questions rapid fire. I'm so proud of us, uh, proud of you, uh, really. But uh, so now we got two. We got two minutes, Bonnie. Uh, you had a bunch of things that you wanted to talk about. Is there anything in particular you want to talk about in two minutes? Uh, sure. Why not? Um, well, let's start talking about due process. Let's, okay. Let's two minutes about due process and we can see if people want more. Remember that the system was set up originally so that parents were supposed to be able to do all this themselves and you can do this. You can go to the Office of Administrative Hearings website for the state of California. I don't know about other states. We've got an e-filing system where you can do all of this online. And there are forms at the Office of Administrative Hearings Special Education website for how to file for due process. And for those of you that have ever filed a regional center appeal, it can look that simple. It can be a two page submission that says what is the nature of your problem and what is the resolution that you need to resolve this. 
And the, the trickiest part of, of completing that form is that OAH requires a proof of service showing that you served it on your school district. So you, you have to make sure that you file your complaint with a proof of service and you serve it upon your school district. So you will be serving it, you'll be serving it on the school district and on the Office of Administrative Hearings. And that will be enough to get you a case number and a resolution session and, a, and probably a mediation. And you don't have to worry if your complaint isn't perfect. The whole point about this is to rest your case away from the sort of stalled IEP level of things and put you into a different echelon. So we could finish that next time we're on the air. I, I think that sounds like a great idea. I, Cause I think people are right now are wanting to be empowered with things that they can do. Um, you know, and, and that's one of the things that you can do. And I know personally that uh, I, I, I never actually had to get to the point where we filed for due process. I was three times in consideration uh, for it. At, you know, people who watch the show know my story that I got filed against twice due process from the, from the school district. But I can tell you that's yes, very special. But I can tell you that good things happen in mediation. Mediation is a place where you get stuff done. Um, and it's an opportunity where you're sitting there and you're able to like talk and there's a reasonable person there who's can talking. You, can you confirm that it was a whole different group of people than the IEP level people that were sort of- Oh, 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 oh. totally different people. Yeah. The people who actually, you know, it's that Maya Angelou thing about never take a no from somebody who wasn't authorized to give you a yes. Mm -hmm. And when you get in the mediation right. room, you're, you're okay. in the room with the people who can give you the yes. Um, and, and they're there with a reasonable person who does not have a dog in the fight, who just is like the reasonable person there. And I found that if I was reasonable, that person would say to the, the people on the other side of the table, listen to her, she's being reasonable. Um, and that, that ended up helping me great big balls fire. Yes. I I'm a big fan of mediation. It's where good things happen. Okay. Well, and that's good. That's good for them to hear from you because you're, yes. you're, you're a lay person having done this. That's right, that's so. right. Anyway, Bonnie, tell us again where we can find you and Tolner Law Offices. You can probably find me in my kitchen, which is not a good thing. <laughs> 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 and, I and, love it. And sometimes when I'm down there, I'm actually cleaning. Not ah. uh, yeah, so Tolner Law Offices, we have offices in San Jose, El Segundo and Irvine. You can find us on the website, T-O-L-L-N-E-R Law Offices or you can reach out to 310-245-1968. Good questions, guys. We're going to- Thank you so much. Solving. You know, Thank you, Bonnie. We'll see you next week. Sounds good. All right, take care. Uh, and bye-bye. Uh, and we're a little bit late coming to our next guest, which is the fabulous Cassidy Hooper. And while we're getting Cassidy in, I just want to address some things that, that you guys have written in. Love hearing from Carrie that she says lemonade just keep saying to myself, it could be worse. Uh, uh, people say that they get their groceries doing drive-in pickups at Walmart, but there's Cassidy. Cassidy, welcome to Autism Live. Hi, Shannon. Nice to be here. <laughs> uh, it's so exciting to finally get to talk to you almost face-to-face, -face, Cassidy, because you've been somebody that, has, uh, that I've considered a friend for many, many, many years and yeah. thrilled to have you here with us. Uh, we were saying before that you are uh, a, a person who considers yourself an autism self-advocate, uh, yes. but you host a show. Talk to us a little bit about what your show is about and where we can find it. Uh, yeah, um, it's on a podcast called Anchor, um, and you can find it on Apple Podcasts as well. Um, it's called Cassidy's Turner Syndrome and Asperger's Syndrome Chat. And I just talk about my experiences and I talked to, I talked to, uh, Dr. Tara Reagan. I'm actually of autism grown up. I am the online community manager at autism grown up, which is a nonprofit organization based in North Carolina. So we work in different States. The internet can do amazing things. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and Cassidy, I just want to cry because like this is the first time I'm ever getting to talk to you. And I, I don't know why it didn't occur to me that you have this gorgeous Southern accent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so Cassidy, you mentioned Turner syndrome. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about what Turner syndrome is? Yeah, it's a genetic condition. It's a chromosomal abnormality that occurs only in females. And it, it, it comes along with a lot of health issues and short stature and sometimes we have learning disabilities and stuff like that so it's uh when you are missing uh the second X chromosome or a, it's a partial deletion of the second X chromosome in females so yeah that's pretty much uh what turner syndrome is and, and how rare yeah. is it it's pretty rare isn't it yeah it's pretty rare yeah so you know but, what that means? It means that you are extra special, yeah, You're extra okay. unique, extra special, right? And so you talk about that and you talk about being an adult with an autism diagnosis, the two together. Cassidy, if like, what do you, what would you like for the rest of the world to know about being a young woman living with these two diagnoses? What do you wish we knew? Uh, yeah. Um, that, you can live a happy and fulfilled life, even despite your diagnosis, that you can live a happy, fulfilled life and do whatever you set your mind to. Um, so yeah, that's why I want the world to know about it. What a wonderful, wonderful example you are. So now Cassidy, let's take a stroll down memory lane. I, uh, how did you first find us at Autism Live? Uh, yeah, I found it online. I'm a very big researcher on Google and on YouTube. So yeah, I'm very active online. So I, I kind of remember, I think it was like in the first year that we were doing Autism Live, or it was the first or second year. And I remember that you wrote in a question and um, that we asked Dr. Grampiche the question. And I feel like we, like we just have gotten to ride uh, in the sidecar, uh, you and I became friends on, on Facebook and I watched you like, I'm, I'm thinking you had to have been like what, 16 at that time. Yeah. Oh, around 16. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but now you've gone on to do amazing things. You, yeah. you went to college. Yeah. <laughs> and you've become an aunt in that amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and now you've got a, you've got this wonderful job that you're doing and you've got this fabulous podcast so we can find the podcast on anchor, but is there a specific time that we need to look for it? Cassidy, where, or like, when do you do it? Uh, well, I, um, publish it every Wednesday. Uh, I have a lot of, uh, autism self-advocates um and uh, professionals i interviewed dr mark yeager of a team he has an amazing organization here called team which stands for together enhancing autism awareness in mississippi and he has an awesome summer camp for children and adults with autism and i've been twice and I don't know about this year with the coronavirus going on, but it's supposed to be in June, but we don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, he, he's awesome. And I interviewed Dr. Tara Regan from Autism Grown Up, which I'm the online community manager of. And so, yeah, she's amazing too. She's really sweet. You should interview her. Uh, I should. I should. Anybody yeah. who's smart enough to hire you, Cassidy, I would love to have on the show um, and talk. So that's, you're the online manager. So is this something that's just in your local area or can other people in other States access it? Yeah, you can all over the world. Um, it's a free online community. It's not on Facebook. It's on Mighty Networks, which is an app. And uh, it's a safe space away from Facebook. It's a free community. It's uh, you can find it at, community.autismgrownup.com and anyone can sign up for free and uh yeah it's for autistic adults 
parents, family members, siblings, and grandparents, and stuff like that, organizations, anybody who has an interest in serving autistic adults and helping autistic individuals transition into adulthood and help them navigate adulthood. So well, it's an amazing organization, yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot of people who are writing in wonderful things about you. Uh, Tara has written and said, hey, Cassidy, we love her too at Autism Grown Up. She's the best. And I think that that's probably <laughs> true. So apparently, Tara, we have to get you on the show. And uh, people writing in and saying hi. And somebody who said, Cassidy, what an amazing woman. And I think we can all agree Thank with that. You. So what is the name of your podcast? Uh, Cassidy's Turner Syndrome and Asperger's Syndrome chat. I know it's long, but uh, it's all right. It yeah. says what it, it says what it is. My goodness, nobody's confused. Yeah. It's not like you called it potholders and and flowers, right? And then we're like, what is yeah. that about? <laughs> it's perfect. It says what it is. So we would go to Anchor. Now I've never been to Anchor. So is it just Anchor.com, and then we look for um, Cassidy Hooper? Yeah, it's you can download it on the app. Uh, download it on the Apple App Store, or you can, it's anchor.fm. Um, anchor.fm. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we want to go to find the podcast, and you publish another one every Wednesday. So, and I'm telling you guys, you know, she's she's going to put me out of business because she's uh, <laughs> she's fabulous host. No, I'm serious, and what a good thing, please. That would be a thing I would, I would love to see happen. So check out her podcast, but also I think everybody's going to want to go to that autism grown up. Uh, so tell us again, where we find that. Community.autismgrownup.com. So I want to know, uh, we've only got like two minutes left, Cassidy, but I want to know, like, what are some things that you're doing as the community is community, community outreach is that at your t online outreach. What's your title? I yeah. don't remember. Okay. <laughs> online community manager. I just okay. help um, engage and facilitate the community and help Dr. Tara Regan come up, brainstorm with the ideas um, on how to make the community better. So yeah, that's pretty much my job. <laughs> you are awesome. And what a wonderful addition to their team you are. So uh, one more time, where do they go uh, to get to, to do that community? Community.autismgrownup.com. Okay. So you guys get on there because what a wonderful resource and connect with Cassidy because she's a fabulous young woman going places. We're all <laughs> so in awe of you, Cassidy. It has been my great pleasure to have watched you do some pretty amazing things over the years. Thank you so much, Shannon. I You're enjoy talking to you. <laughs> I enjoy talking to you too. You're doing great. Is there anything else you want to tell the folks at home? Uh, not at the moment. All right. But, but uh, maybe we have to have yeah. you come back. Yeah. Just uh, go to community.autismgrownup.com and connect with me there. I'm also on Facebook, Cassidy Hooper, and you can listen to my podcast on anchor and apple podcasts and uh yeah i can i love to connect with you so Cassidy yeah Cassidy is the soul of persistence uh because we had talked about this i don't know months ago about having you be mm -hmm. on the show and then i got a little distracted with this covid sort of thing and <laughs> everything had to change and how we did the show change and we've had many people who talked about wanting to be on the show during april but cassidy was like um shannon and you very politely, correctly would, you know, bring, you know, you would send another email and say, Shannon, you know, we talked about this. Do you, you know, and she just, she stayed on me, uh, which is why she's here today because she was professional. She did it appropriately and she was persistent, which is the hallmark of success, Cassidy. You're going to do very well. Thank in you. So all right, please, good, you know, stay in touch with us and stay safe and healthy, okay? Okay, thank you All so right. much. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, isn't she amazing? Isn't she just uh, a delight? 
so glad that we finally, and, and it really is because she was persistent why she's here. Okay, I got a couple of uh, comments and questions that I got to deal with here. So um, for the person who wrote in about your 65 year old sister, uh, they say she moved in a year ago, she receives disability and survivor benefits, both from Social Security Monthly. She's never worked. Can you provide uh, me help here? Or is this more for children with autism? There are some very difficult behaviors I'd like to help her with, and I'd like to find ways to connect with her more. And I just want to say, mm, love, uh, right? Because what a good sister you are. And so um, this show is not just for children, and we have lots of resources that we do. And I really would uh, encourage you to check out um, some of the videos that we've done in our library about challenging behavior, because here's the thing about most challenging behavior. Um, is that it, it all, it's going to look different, um, but it all pairs down to the same thing. Every behavior that somebody does, they do for a reason. And uh, it might be because they have no other way of getting the thing that they need, right? There are four usual suspects. With adults, we usually add a fifth one. Uh, I'm rocking everybody's mind right now because you're like, Shannon, you've been talking about the four usual specs, uh, suspects, but when kids get a little bit older and into the teen years and adult years, sometimes we see a, a fifth one. So the four usual suspects are people do things to get attention and it doesn't matter good attention, bad attention, everybody needs attention. And if they're not getting it, they will behave in ways to get attention. Uh, one is to escape doing something that they don't wanna do and they have no other way out. And the escape can be just for three seconds. If I do something to escape doing something and I get a three second reprieve, I'm gonna do it more. Um, they do things to get access to someone or something. That's like if they want cookies or they want um, to be with a certain person or to be with a puppy down the street, right? Um, and then the last of the four usual suspects is that they do something because it's automatically reinforcing to them on the inside. So um, you see people who poke their eyes, right? Because they get to see colors or because it, they have a headache and it releases the pain for even a second, right? Now the fifth one that we don't usually talk about on the show, but we should, because we do see this sometimes, sometimes even with a really smart kiddo um, is control that people will do things just to gain control. And honestly, I've been thinking about doing a whole show on the control issue because if you haven't been seeing it before, you might very well see this with COVID. And by the way, these five things are not just for autism. These are for all people, right? Those are the reasons why we engage in behavior that is sometimes not good for us or other people, those five reasons. And once we can figure out what the reason is, then we have scientifically proven methods of dealing with each one of those things. And we've done tons of shows on those. So I wanna encourage you to check out our library of videos. And if you'll write in and tell us what the challenging behavior is, then I've got experts later on this week, <laughs> tons of experts who can talk to you. And in a second, we're gonna talk about that. I'm just noticing, I make crazy faces. Uh, okay. I love that somebody said they do the drive up for the, because the question of the day was, how are you getting your groceries? Somebody said, I do the drive up at Walmart. Um, I love the whole drive up thing. I think that that's a really good thing. Um, okay. And I love that Lori from the D said she just popped in to hit the like button. And thank you again for getting all this information to us. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Uh, hi ladies. Can you please send a link for this week's schedule of webinars? I don't want to miss Temple Grandin's mother or other good webinars. Um, let me explain for those of you who don't know all this week on the show, Ooh, we've got such good things. And I am going to send out the postcard for those of you who are subscribed. I'm going to do that as soon as the show is over. Um, I've, I've been behind on it, but I'm going to send it out. So if you haven't subscribed, this is a perfect reason to, so you can get that viewer guide that's supposed to come every Monday. Um, so, but tomorrow on the show, different time, we are starting a half an hour early. Um, so at 9.30 Pacific time, we have Temple Grandin with us. And she's starting, you know, Temple, she's starting at 9.30. So be here a half an hour early tomorrow. And I'm taking questions from subscribers in advance of, and I'll take questions live from any, anyone, but I'm taking questions for Temple Grandin from subscribers um, from now until um, like nine o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So that's tomorrow. On Wednesday, we have Dr. Grampy Shea answering your questions. Incredible, right? On Thursday, 
Kobe Bird is going to be with us. Kobe Bird is the talented young actor who's been on the show. He's actually hosted some red carpet stuff for us because he's so amazing. He's 17 years old on the spectrum, an actor. First, he was on Speechless, had a couple of lines on Speechless. Then he got a role on The Good Doctor, which was amazing, right? And now he is one of the main roles. He's Rufus on that Netflix hit, Lock and Key. If you haven't seen it, you need to seriously binge watch some Netflix. He is absolutely precious and darling, playing a, a young man on the spectrum and he's on the spectrum. Kobe's gonna be with us. It's gonna be insane. He's so delightful. And let me just tell you something, he sings. The boy is going to Broadway. As soon as Broadway's reopen, get ready. Cause we're gonna see, he's gonna be a Broadway star. Then on Friday, as if we didn't have this like wonderful cake, we have iced it with the perfect icing that Eustacia Cutler is going to be with us on Friday for Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. She's going to talk a little bit and then she's going to answer some questions. I want the questions for Eustacia beforehand. So be writing the questions in so that she and I can curate them together. I think we're probably going to have to have her on a second time soon, but you know, Temple and Eustacia in the same week and Kobe Bird, and Dr. Grand Pichet, and you just saw Bonnie and Cassidy. Look, mic drop. I can't do better than this, you guys. So um, I'm going to send out that postcard. It's available on Facebook right now, but don't forget that tomorrow, half an hour early, one time only, Temple was like, look, I want to do Tuesday, but can it be a half hour? And what am I going to say to her? It's Temple Grand, and I'm going to say, no, we're coming a half an hour early. So don't tune in at the top of the hour and go, did I miss something? Uh, tune in later. I'm really quickly looking to see what you guys, um, okay, so definitely check that out. Now, you mentioned webinars because if you are a card family and you are getting card services, then we have a nightly thing that we do at four o'clock here Pacific time, seven o'clock Eastern time that is just for card parents. It's the card webinars. And I sent you an email on Friday, uh, write to me, s.penrod at, at autism-live.com if you are not getting the code for that because it is a very specific code. You have to be a card family member to be at those webinars and they are really fabulous and off the chain. Uh, and I apologize that I can't let everybody into that, but it's just, it's, it just is what it is. But I do as much as I can for you here. I really, really do. All right, I love all of you. Tomorrow, we're, we're back here special time, half hour earlier than we normally are with Dr. Temple Grandin. Uh, if you're a subscriber, write to me right now and tell me questions you want to ask. If you are not a subscriber, now's a great time to subscribe. Um, you can do that on our homepage, autism-live.com. As soon as you're on there for a second, a thing pops up and it says, uh, would you like to subscribe? And all you get is the your weekly postcard that comes to you and tells you who's going to be on the show so that you don't miss Temple Grand in a half an hour early. I love you all. What a privilege it is to be here with you. Uh, si se puede, right? Let's hold hands. Let's have an amazing week this week. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, give your kiddos a hug for me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now.